It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Connecticut Sun VP of Business Development, Amy Shear. How are you doing today? Good, Brandon. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to work in professional sports? Sure. I was uh, lucky enough to grow up while the Meadowlands Sports Complex was being built, Giant Stadium, Meadowlands Arena at the time, and uh, been playing sports my whole life and thought it would be pretty cool to be able to go to work there. And uh, I don't think I really ever thought that that could be a job until I saw the Meadowlands being built and uh, decided that was the place for me. What was it like getting into professional sports, getting your first job with the Brooklyn Nets? Uh, It was actually the New Jersey Nets at the time. And it it was great. It was a dream come true. It was where I wanted to work at the Meadowlands Arena. no naming rights at the time. And uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to learn from an amazing group of um, leaders there and really learn the business from the ground up. So uh, very fortunate to have gotten my break where I wanted to be and with some amazing leaders. How was it being the VP of broadcasting for them? Oh, it's a dream come true, you know. Um, It was my hometown team. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with some of the most amazing announcers, uh, Ian Eagle being one of them, um, Bob Papa, Chris Carino, Howard David, Michael Corrin, Jim Spinarco, Bill Raftery. I mean, it was, it was, um, it just was an amazing time when the sports industry was growing and um, just obviously the ability to work with uh, those amazing guys was, was, it was wonderful. And, uh, you know, it was at a time when teams were just taking their rights in house. And so it was a chance to really build out all the programming from the ground up. And uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And it was actually, you know, you're sitting at the scores table every game. So you have the best seat in the house to watch the game as well. So a double win. What was it like for you to go from the NBA to the WNBA with the New York Liberty? Uh, also a bit of a dream come true. Um, not quite old enough to be a title nine baby, but to be able to go into the WNBA at a time of growth and to be able to make an impact for women athletes and on women's sports was, uh, it was just amazing. Um, and you go from, you know, a staff where you had at that time, maybe 40 or 50 people to a staff of like eight people, um, you know, a little bit of a different challenge every day you had to be all in, uh, and it was certainly a grind um but a grind of passion so every day you'd come into work and it would be a bit of everything you never knew what day or or what your day would bring so you go from focusing on maybe three or four things a day to 23 or 24 things a day but it was great what were some of your roles as vp of marketing and communications for the liberty uh it was everything that wasn't basketball so marketing advertising brands community relations public relations ticket sales and service, partnership sales and service, event presentation, uh, liaison with the league and the arena for arena operations, uh, you name it. It, Other than than basketball, it was everything. What was it like going from your basketball experience to first getting into soccer with the New York FC? Uh, I, I mean, First of all, having the opportunity to start a franchise from ground zero in New York City, I, yeah, opportunity of a lifetime. Um, and my boss at the time, Tim Pernetti, uh, just an absolute gem to work for. Uh, but being able to bring to life a franchise and a brand and to be able to go out and sell and fill the stadium, Yankee Stadium of all places, so iconic. Uh, it was just the opportunity of a lifetime and also to do it under the umbrella of Manchester city, one of the most uh, successful soccer teams, um, you know, in the last couple of decades. So it was amazing to actually be able to 
learn a lot about international soccer and really grow an appreciation for the sport and also learn the sport from some great minds overseas. Uh, they were great bringing us to Manchester and teaching us a lot about um, the game on the international level as, as well as uh, in the U.S. So um, I can't imagine that an opportunity will ever cross my uh, world again. But uh, yeah, probably one of the most favorite things I've ever done. What was that like working with soccer coming from obviously being in the basketball world for so long? Uh, it was just learning a new culture around a sport and, and understanding the sport. I can watch a basketball game and understand the nuance of the game and uh, understand the trajectory of, of the back and forth and what's happening and the coaching. Um, and so going to a new sport and also and trying to understand the nuance of the sport. So when you're watching it, you could actually enjoy it and be able to talk the talk. So I was very lucky to um, have people at NYCFC who are willing to do that for you and with you. Um, whether it was Claudio Reina here, whether it was uh, Patrick Vieira in Manchester, there was just uh, great people and great soccer minds to sit with you and really teach you the sport. Uh, and the culture around soccer is great. Um, and, and how they teach soccer in the youth um, is also an unbelievable, how the ladder up of youth through all the different tiers of soccer. So um, very fortunate to be able to have a great people uh, that are willing to take the time and teach you. But the soccer culture and the game is great. I still, on Saturday and Sunday mornings, I still, I, I put the Premier League on to, to work out to. So I'm still very, I still very much love the sport and appreciate the sport. And I, I watch it every weekend. What was it like to get the job as the chief communications officer for the New York Bull, Red Bull? Um, it was chief commercial officer. Um, and also a, a brilliant opportunity to be able to work on a, on a global scale with the company Red Bull uh, out of Austria, um, and also to work with Red Bull North America here. Um, it was it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It, it was it was a, a great opportunity to build the revenue there, from tickets to partnerships to youth. Uh, a really good group of people there, um, and again, being able to work on an international scale. Uh, having the opportunity to, again to see soccer across the globe um, was amazing. A lot of fun. What was it like, obviously, with all of your experience owning your own business and helping others? You know, I think, I think for me, um, you know, it was a bit of a, it was time for a bit of a change and to be able to build out a little bit of my own schedule. So I think that teams, you know, they hire um, people for specific positions and then there's always sort of gaps to be filled. And I think given my experience, I was able to just be able to walk in the door and very quickly fill those gaps. Uh, and it was also a lot of fun to be able to work different sports, to be able to work in hockey and to be able to work um, in the G League and be able to work in rugby. So it was a, a lot of fun for me to be able to experience different sports and different cultures at, at different levels and different stages of their growth within the sports ecosystem. Uh, so it was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was good for, for several years, I mean, especially during COVID. It was a great way to sort of um, spread my love for sports out and be able to work from home for, for multiple teams at once and sort of get my fill of uh, what I love to do. What was that like of obviously working for multiple teams instead of just working, let's say, for one particular team for so long? Uh, I think I've always had a job that had a wide purview. Um, so for me, I very much like being on an eight-lane highway versus a two-lane highway. So working for multiple teams and focusing on specific things within the team for me, sort of, it, it fits sort of my personality, at least my professional personality of always sort of being a little schizophrenic because I've had so many lanes to work within. Um, so for me, it was, it was great. It's, um, you know, a, a way for me to sort of, I guess, fill my passion, right? I like doing a lot of different things. I'm a jack of all trades. Uh, and this was a way for me to really sort of keep my skills sharp, but also learn new sports and learn new cultures and also learn from other people outside of sort of the traditional norm of what I was used to. So it was um, a lot of fun, learn new leadership skills, learn new sports skills, sports rules, uh, meet different athletes. It was, it was good. What was it like for you to come back to the WNBA to work with the Connecticut Suns? Uh, just Sun, singular. Um, it was, it's great. I positively uh, love the WNBA, very passionate about the WNBA. And um, the Connecticut Sun, uh, 
you know, Chris Yanko and Amber Cox, uh, the previous um, VPs there, did such an amazing job laying the groundwork for such a successful team on the court and in the stands. And, you know, I, I know both of them very, very well through uh, my time in the WNBA. And it's sort of a privilege to be able to follow in their footsteps and continue to try and build uh, upon what they've done. Uh, but I love the WNBA and it's it's where I want to be. And I'm very passionate about continuing to, to build and grow the league and more opportunities for these athletes on and off the court. And um, if you've not been to a WNBA game or not watched a WNBA game, not you, but anybody listening, you absolutely should. Um, it's a beautiful sport and the athletes are amazing and the games are a lot of fun. What are some of your roles as VP of business operations? Uh, it, again, it's everything except for basketball. Um, so whether it's doing team research, building out our brand, working on all of our content, our ticket sales and service, working on partnerships, um, our event presentation, uh, it's working with PR and, and communications, it, it's community relations, it's, every, it's everything. Um, so basically, again, anything that's not basketball, um, I, I will oversee. What is something that you learned now that you didn't know before working in professional sports on the business operations side? You know, I, I think I think sports is a bit of a microcosm for life. Um, I think when you play sports, you learn how to be a good teammate. You learn how to communicate. You learn how to take instruction. You learn how to be tough. You learn how to take criticism. Uh, you learn how to work hard. You learn how to work within a system. And I, I think all of those things I learned playing sports as a kid have been put into, into my professional and work life in some way or another. So I, I think this big world of sports is just, it's just a microcosm of living life every day and, and how do you live at your best? Um, and who knew that, you know, playing softball and tennis when you're 10, 11, 12 years old to through college would, would sort of serve as a platform for life and a basis for life skills and, and how to, how to work within the workplace. So, um, I think it's crazy that, you know, so young in life, you learn a set of skills that help you as an adult and help you as a professional. What advice would you give people looking to work in the WNBA? I think if anybody's looking to work in the WNBA or work in sports is to, um, you know, get as much experience as you can while you're still in school. So many people want to work in sports now. I, I was very fortunate where, you know, when I was coming up, sport management was just a, in the beginning, you know, it was in its infancy, but now every school has it and it's so much more competitive. So you really have to set yourself up for your professional life while you're still a student uh, and find ways to differentiate yourself, volunteer for everything and anything. It's how you learn. Um, and then by the time, you know, you go to interview for the real jobs, you've got a pretty packed resume, uh, whether it's internships, whether it's things at your school, get the experience before it's time to interview for real. What advice would you have people looking to work in the front office of professional sports? Uh, same as what I just said, honestly, it's, uh, get all your experience before you get out of school, uh, may take every opportunity to work to volunteer at your school, to work for the teams, to work for sports information, do as many internships as you possibly can while you're still in school and be willing to put the time in. Um, this is a, a profession where you give up your weekends, you give up a lot of holidays, time with your family. And so you have to be willing to sacrifice to do this. And uh, that means getting a lot of experience before you're ever actually a graduate. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Uh, I am on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, but I am probably the most boring follow you will ever have. I very, very rarely post. Um, I'm more of a follower, uh, so I can keep up with the trends, um, and to see what's going on for work. But I, I very rarely, um, I'm, I'm, I'm like a minimalist when it comes to posting. I'm more of someone who uses social media, uh, literally for my job versus my personal life. So. Thank you again, Amy Shear, for your interview and best of luck in your future with the Connecticut Sun. All right. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Amy Shear, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you. Okay. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. 
Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.